Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Coral, and I'm here with the books I got in December. Um, there's probably going to be lots of cat noises in the background because they just like follow me wherever I go, like tiny little minions. And then there's like bags and shit on the floor in this room right now because this is our room where the Christmas tree and stuff was. And I haven't cleaned it up. I haven't cleaned any of this shit up. So there's just like debris all over the floor and the cats keep messing with it. And I'm just, I can't clean it up before I film this or I'll never film it. So here I am. Excuse the cat noises. And apparently excuse the dog noises. Um... But like I said, I'm here with the books I bought in December and two that were gifts. The first one here is School Days by Robert Hughes. I bought this really just because of the cover. I wanted this because of a trope video I'd like to do probably early 2021. And this is some sort of like weird medical experiment book. It's like um, this guy got caught doing mind control experiments and scientific like medical exper ex experiments. There is a police chief, police officer, whose wife uh, was really interested in the stuff that this guy was doing. Somehow she's dead and now the man's son is going to university in the place where the scientific experiments happened. So there must be like some thing that comes up from the past, I'm assuming. Okay, this might be the most exciting thing I got for Christmas. And that is the Folio Society edition of The Shining. It is heavy and gorgeous and it has, um, uh, it has a bunch of um, illustrations in it. I think this one's my favorite of the the New Year's party, or whatever party that was. I think it was a New Year's party, right? Um, so, Zach got this for me for Christmas, and I was very excited to have it. It comes, it, it comes with its own little slipcase, so it will be nice and safe on my bookshelf. I also got a copy of Mockingbird by Chuck Wendig. This is the second book in the Miri, in the Miriam Black series. I read Blackbirds, which was the first one a couple months ago and I really liked it. So I want to read this before like I lose my memory of it. Like not that I completely lose my memory, but I start to lose the fine details, you know, sometimes if it takes me too long. So I need to read this soon. All right, the next book I have here is The Rune of Kings by Jen Lyons, and this is an adult fantasy series. What I know about this is that there is like a, um, a guy named Kieran, and he grew up in like the slums of the city. He is definitely like um, a lower class citizen, but he finds out that he's the missing son of a treasonous prince, I think, or a king. So he's like taken and locked up, even though it's like he didn't know this about his lineage, you know, and um, that's all I know. And I've heard very, very good things about this. It seems like it's going to be a good fantasy book. Next, I have Cross Your Heart by Sarah Pinborough. Um, I found this on Book Outlet when they did their uh, Black, Black Friday sale. That's why I bought it. I have another one of Sarah Pinborough's books and I, I always hear good things about them, but I've never read any of her stuff yet. And I lightly skimmed the synopsis because I hate reading the synopsises of thrillers. So like what I kind of gathered from this is that there is a woman who is a single mother. She has like a teenage daughter and um, there is something in the mother's past that she doesn't want like brought up. And I don't know what it is. Like, is it really bad? Like, is it just like normal bad or is it like really bad? I don't know, I'll have to read it. Uh, I also from Book Outlet picked up we Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal, 
and this is a YA fantasy book. Um, it's they, there's like two main characters. Uh, one's a young woman, one's a young man, and they both kind of have these kind of like secret identities because um, in their society they won't fit in with the roles that they want to play. So they, you know, have their like societal norm self and then they're like, and then like the selves that they want to actually be and they're like alter egos are becoming kind of legendary but of course nobody knows who they really are so uh that's all i know about this next i have in the valley of the sun by andy davidson this is like a western vampire book um this is one i've wanted to get for a while and i finally did that so this is a book about a man who is a vampire and he obviously you know doesn't just like walk around being like i'm a vampire you know so he eventually meets this woman who has a young son and i i think she like hires him to do something for her and obviously that puts her into danger so you know we'll have to find out if any danger um comes of that anything bad comes of that and there's also a texas ranger who is hunting this vampire um for something that he did in the past and um i bought this because i want to read more um like horror westerns and um so like this came up when i was looking for books like that so um, it is a Bram Stoker Award nominee. I don't know what year. What year did this come out? 2017? So, fairly recently. Um, I've never heard anyone talk about it, I don't think. But it sounds interesting. It kind of gives me like, um, what's that movie? From Dawn Till Dusk? That's it, right? The Quentin Tarantino one with the, um, you know, the... Everyone knows if you've seen that, you know, the thing. Wait, did I call it from dawn till dusk or did I call it from dusk till dawn? I don't know. It's dusk. It's from dusk till dawn. Oh my god, my brain. Listen, Christmas break has not been kind to me. I also picked up Give the Dark My Love by Beth Revis. I did read one of her earlier books and put it down because I thought, well, like, I just couldn't handle the mediocrity of it. It was just like so, uh, it was like a YA science fiction book and I just could not like it. Um, but I've heard really great things about this. Um, obviously, you know, authors writing can change. So I thought I'd give it a try. And um, the synopsis of this sounded interesting. This is about a young woman who goes to um, a university. She wants to study like medicinal science and um, she, there's something about like a plague going on at the same time, which is really what interests me because I really like fictional illnesses and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much all I know about this. I hope that it's good and then maybe I can read more of Beth Revis' stuff. All right, another book I picked up this month is The Girl King by Mimi Yu. This is um, like an Asian inspired fantasy book about um, two sisters <clears throat> and one of them is set to become the heir to the throne, but they're both very surprised when their father chooses one of their male cousins to be the heir instead. Uh, so there's that. Um, there's also some stuff with like shapeshifters and forbidden magic and I really 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 love um, Asian inspired anything. So I think this will be right up my alley. I'm hoping. I really love ship, sh ship shifter. Oh! Shapeshifter <laughs> stuff too. So there's that. I also bought You Two Can Have a Body Like Mine by Alexandra Kleeman. And this is one that when I first um, started reading like a large amount of books again, you know, cause like I've I definitely as a teenager and as someone in like in my early twenties, I didn't read 
Like I was always reading, but I didn't set aside a lot of time to read, if you know what I mean. So um, when I started giving myself more time to read, I um, was looking up books and books and books. Uh, I was like, ugh, every kind of book list that I could find. Um, because I was very behind on the times too. Um, you know, I wasn't, it was like right when I started like my uh, bookstagram and all that kind of stuff uh, quite a few years ago now. But um, this is one that I repeatedly heard about, it, just how like weird it is. And I really like don't know how to explain the synopsis because I don't think I even know. And because the characters don't have names, they're just called A, B, and C. So it's like A wants to do this with B and then C is doing this and it's so it's like kind of confusing. Um, but I've heard it's strange and interesting and it seems kind of dark and I don't know. Um, I really love the colors on this cover though, I'll tell you that much. That I do know. There is a lot of books here this month, you guys. Um, so I'm not even halfway yet. Next I have The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. This is one that I've wanted to get for a while. It's been out for a couple months. But this is about a woman's mother-in-law who's found dead of an apparent suicide. Um, there is a note saying that she did it because she found out she had cancer, but an autopsy is done and there is no cancer. So it's like a murder mystery. Who killed the mother-in-law and why? And was it the wife? I don't know. I'll have to read it and find out. Okay, this one I'm super interested in. This is called You All Grow Up and Leave Me by Piper Weiss. This is a memoir about um, a young woman who had a relationship with, I think it was, who was it? Oh yeah, a coach, a tennis coach. And like, obviously that's not cool. Uh, this kind of gives me, oh gosh, what was that awful? That, hmm, that HBO show that they did with Laura Dent, or Laura Dern, I mean. It was The Tale. I don't know if any of you watched that, but it was like one of the most disturbing things I think I've ever seen um, because it's just very real and raw. Thanks. And um, I think that this is similar to that where a young person is having um, a sexual relationship with somebody who is um, clearly taking advantage of them and um, I always feel weird uh, talking about books like this and being like I want to read this but on the other hand if this person didn't want anyone to know about this then they wouldn't have written a memoir about it and um, yeah <laughs> so don't judge me okay I also bought Wind Witch by uh, Susan Dennard this is the second book in a series that I have not read yet, but I keep hearing great things about the series, about how like underhyped it is for how good it is. And I think this is one that I'm gonna try to read this year, a series that I'm gonna try to read this year. So um, something about people who can do things, witches and shit. Ooh, and this is a book I have read. I got an ARC and so I bought a physical copy of it finally. This is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson and this was a really great YA book. Um, it's about this girl named Mia, I think her name is. I don't know, it's been more than a year since I read it. Oh, Mila, not Mia. And her best friend dies tragically and she doesn't know why so she performs a seance to bring her back to life but her friend isn't like exactly alive. And um, so it kind of goes on from there. She's trying to figure out like what happened. Um, did she try to kill herself? Uh, was it an accident? Did somebody hurt her? And um, so it's like a little bit of like a murder mystery with a lot of like fun friendship stuff. And it's a little bit sad and a little bit happy and it was all around a great book. So I'm glad to finally have a real copy of that. 
Okay, I also, uh, this came in an owl crate this month. This is the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White, and I'm so excited to have this. This is one I want to read right away. This is about Guinevere, but if Guinevere wasn't really a princess, and if she was instead married to King Arthur to kind of investigate some goings on inside Camelot, this will be a fun take on it, I think. Something that's a little bit different, and I really, really, really have loved what I've read of Kirsten White's work so far, so I'm excited to um, read some more. Okay, this is another one that I want to get to very soon. This is Getting the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Uh, Tamsin is such a cool name. There was a woman on the Donner Expedition named Tamsin. And this is about Gideon, who is like a badass, like, necromancer. Um, and I don't really know more than that. But um, I don't think I want to know because I want to kind of just savor every bit of information I learn about it as I'm reading, you know what I mean? I've heard very good things so far. In fact, um, I got this at Barnes & Noble the other day and the checkout, the woman at the checkout was like, oh, this is such a good book. So I have it on good authority that this is a good book. And so I hope it actually is. We'll see. Okay, these four books are... Uh, from the December Nightworms. This is Jimmy the Freak by Charles Colia and Mark Steensland. Um, this is about a little boy who was dropped on his head and now he is a psychic and he has like a bodyguard, but the bodyguard, um, the bodyguard starts to feel bad about kind of taking advantage of this boy. So he like runs off with him. But I've seen a couple of people say that this is really good. So I'm excited for that. Um, next I have Kelly Owens, Waiting Out Winter. Uh, I kind of have like, I don't know, um, I don't think we'll ever read this, which makes me kind of sad, um, because, you know, Kelly is an indie author, but I read The Hatch, which is, which was titled as the standalone sequel to Waiting Out Winter, and so I thought it was just going to be standalone. Uh, but really what happened was that in the hatch, they have to explain everything that happened in Waiting Out Winter. So it's like, I didn't get the very good character development that I feel like I would have in the first book because we're already supposed to know these characters. Um, and then I, I couldn't go back and get that because they already told me everything that happened in Waiting Out Winter. So... I'm kind of bummed that I read that and I don't think it should have been marketed as a standalone sequel. So beware of that, I guess. Next I have Beneath Ash and Bone by D. Alexander Ward. And this seems like a period piece. This is set in, uh, wait, was it before the Civil War? And the town sheriff has to investigate something. There's something about a creepy house and I don't really know much more than that. Um, but all four of these seem very cold and spooky, which is nice. And this one I think is probably the one I'm most interested in in the batch here. This is called Where the Dead Go to Die by Aaron Dries and Mark Allen Gunnels. And this is about uh, kind of like a, um, a hospice, hmm, I don't know if that's the right word. Like a hospice home, is there such a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it's like a care center for people who are eventually going to die of whatever like zombie disease is, is going on. So it's like these people, these caretakers caring for these people um, until they die and then obviously, you know, making sure that the whole zombie thing doesn't spread more. So this one sounds really interesting. It's a very interesting take on zombie fiction. Okay, I also have two graphic novels here. This first one here I have is um, called Plastic, and this is about a man who goes on a killing spree to get his girlfriend Virginia back, and his girlfriend Virginia is a um, blow-up doll. So, um, it sounds super fucking weird and right up my alley. Next I have Heathen Town. Who is this by? By Karina Sarabeko, Gabriel Hardman, Kristen Simon, and Jim Valentino. And this is about a woman who, um, she goes back to see her 
best friend buried at her funeral and it's like in the Everglades and there's something spooky in the swamp. I also have Kids Who Killed by Charles Patrick Ewing. This is a very early 90s book cover I feel like and this is about uh, children who have killed and I think it's like children who have killed other children, children who have killed their parents and stuff like that. Um, it's a very fascinating topic. Okay, I also have um, A Nest of Nightmares by Lisa Tuttle. This is a great cover. This is the newest paperbacks from hell release, re-release, re reissue, reprint, I guess it's a reprint. Um, and this is a short story collection, so I cannot give you a synopsis. Here is Slither by John Halkin, and this is a book about uh, lizards. Are they gators or are they lizards? I think they're just like lizards. Uh, lizards in the sewers that come out and kill everybody. So this is such a freaking fantastic book cover. Um, there are a couple of John Halkin's books that are just you know, in the cover department. So I've never read anything by him though. So I don't know the quality of the content, but the quality of the cover is A plus. Um, next I have Hobgoblin by John Coyne. Um, oh, this is from Brainerd, Minnesota, which isn't very far from where I grew up. But um, this is about a boy who gets obsessed with a board game, like a fantasy board game. I mean, it's basically D and D. And um, he goes on to murder his mother, somebody. It's like based on a, uh, I don't know if it was a real story or like an urban legend of a boy who became obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons and killed his mother or something like that. So um, this came out of that. Okay, next I have Dark Places by Thomas Altman and I, and this is one that I bought just because of the cover. It's so, I don't know. I really love it. It's about a woman who is a newlywed and there are some weird things starting to happen in her marriage and um, some strange people who are, who have popped up into her life and she doesn't really understand why. That's all I know from the synopsis because I know nothing about this book. I just bought it because of the cover. There we go. I will read it someday though. I don't know if uh, there's many people who wonder if um, I actually re read the things that I buy, but I do. I just um, can't get to them all right away because I buy too many. Yes, that's true. I buy more books than I can read each month, but they will get read. I don't buy them just for shits and giggles. Okay, the next one I got is The Calling by Bob Randall. This is about a person, is it a woman? Yes, a woman who keeps getting these eerie phone calls and no one believes her. No one else gets them and no one sees her get them, but she gets them and that's it. It's the calling. Next, I bought The Accursed by Paul Borston and this I think is literally about a snake in a hospital that's like eating people or babies. And um, the synopsis makes this seem like the snake is part of some ancient evil, of course, uh, as vintage horror loves to do. Um, next, I have The Premonition by J.N. Williamson. Uh, I don't really understand what this is about. Something about an ancient evil, of course, and it is tied into an amusement park somehow, I think, and the people who live where this amusement park is, like, don't seem to age at all. And someone's gonna get to the bottom of it. But that's, <laughs> that's all I know. I also bought Soul Eater by Dana Brookins. And this is about a creepy evil house and a quiet town. Maybe it has a secret, I don't know. But I don't think it actually has anything to do with trees, like the cover uh kind of makes it seem so this is another zebra horror book as you can maybe have guessed from the fantastic cover art two more left second to last i finally bought the house next door by anne rivers siddons 
or is it Sidon's? I'm not sure. But um, this is one of the classics of horror literature. Um, this is about a haunted house and I don't really know more than that and I kind of don't want to know more than that. Um, I was able to find this really nice copy of it uh, and I'm very excited to get to this one. Okay, and the last one here I'm really excited about. This is part of the Time Life Books um, Mysteries of the Unknown series that they did and this one is the Alien Encounters book and it's just like one of those weirdo books about things that like probably aren't real but like maybe they are. I don't know. It seems like it's gonna be a blast to read. I really love stuff about aliens even though it, it's probably like one of the only things that actually makes me terrified. Um, like alien movies are probably the only type of horror movies that make me scared and even like documentaries like what was that one oh, there was one i watched about a guy who like faked a bunch a bunch of alien stuff but even that made me scared even though i know that he like made it up um <clears throat> i mean there's proof that he made it up so anyways this was an incredibly large book haul partly because i got a bunch of stuff from book outlet this month so if you're still here at the end of the video thank you so much um, and if you didn't make it through, you won't know that I'm saying this, but thank you for watching anyways. I know it was very long. Um, I will see you guys in another video very soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a super spooky day.